Okay, uh, thank you, Thierry. Thank you for the organizing committee to invite me. Uh, so uh, we spoke with Mirella, and so we decided to organize this uh, uh, session. That I think it's a very important session of the TNM update. Um, I will speak uh, about uh, the new recommendations, and so uh, I think that it is uh, extremely important to give uh, uh, these new recommendations that were released uh, in Singapore a few weeks ago. Uh, and then I will focus on some uh, points in the clinical aspects of the staging, and then Mirella will, uh, uh, will complete uh, the, the session with some uh, points about the pathological uh, stage. Uh, so where, uh, where did we start? So uh, you know that uh, we, um, the, uh, the Staging and Prognostic Factor Committee of the ISLAC uh, um, is in charge for the revision of the uh, TNM. And so from the, the eighth TNM uh, uh, just uh, was a major shift from the Masaoka Koga. Uh, and then we were asked to make the revision for the ninth, and for the ninth, uh, we tried to identify some areas that would be worth discussing and worth uh, uh, refining for the for the ninth TNM. <clears throat> One of these were the uh, were the significance of the tumor size. You know that the tumor size uh, is something that uh, uh, up to now has not been included in uh, uh, the TNM uh, stage classification for thymic tumors, but uh, still there are some. Uh, 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 some uh, controversies. Uh, I just put here two very uh, recent uh, uh, reports, uh, uh, pros and cons, the uh, tumor size in, uh, in, in, for inclusion in the staging, and I will see what we, uh, we, uh, we came up with. So uh, we were able to collect uh, data from the major uh, thymic consortia for the uh, revision for the ninth TNM, and I'm very happy that uh, mo almost uh, all uh, the thymic consortia in the world, from uh, Korea, from China, from Japan, from Europe, from France, uh, and uh, also from ITMIG and from uh, the memorial, contributed. So we were able to uh, collect more than 11,000 cases, uh, and of these, uh, more than 9,000 were available for the analysis. Uh, if we compare the database that used for the ninth with the, the database that were used for the eighth, uh, we have more cases, more advanced cases, which is uh, extremely uh, useful for the clinical stage. And uh, we have a great representative from Asia and a little less uh, representation from the US. Uh, we uh, decided to use uh, as uh, the most relevant outcome the overall survival for the late stages and the uh, um, cumulative incidence of recurrence and freedom from recurrence for the early stages. So all the analyses were done separately for thymoma and thymic carcinoma. Uh, which are two completely different entities, but uh, um, we uh, came up with just one set of recommendations for all thymic tumors. <clears throat> So we were asked to make a revision, so we decided not to, uh, to propose any revision that is uh, completely different from the previous one. We decided to make a revision that is a statistical and clinical significance, which is extremely important, and uh, it possibly a revision that is applicable in the clinical and the pathological setting. So these are the recommendations. So first for the T category, we decided to maintain the concept of the level of involvement, which is, I think, it's extremely important. So the, the highest degree of invasion, regardless of how many other uh, structures at lower level are invaded. And so now T1 is divided into T1A and T1B based on the uh, tumor dimension, the tumor size, less or more than five centimeters. We dropped the mediastinal pleural invasion from the staging, and mediastinal pleural invasion is now to be recorded as an additional histologic descriptor. And second, we decided to downstage the T3 invasion of lung and T3 invasion of the phrenic nerve to T2. So now the T2 can category includes uh, tumors invading the pericardium the, or the lung or the phrenic nerve, which I think is more homogeneous for, uh, for the different T categories. And this is the supporting evidence for that. Uh, you see that there is a good stratification, T1A, T1B, and then T2 and T3, much, much better for thymic carcinoma because uh, for the highest T categories, I think that uh, um, thymic carcinoma is more evident. And uh, this is freedom from recurrence. T1A, T1B, T2, T3, and the same for thymic carcinoma. 
And this is the cumulative incidence of recurrence, which is the reverse curve of the uh, freedom for recurrence, so T1A, T1B, T2, and T3. So I think there is a good discrimination. NNM, uh, our, we did the analysis, and uh, our analysis uh, supported the, um, the I mean, the, the N and the N categories that were proposed for the eighth TNM. So we decided not to make any changes for the N and for the M categories. Um, we also mm, did an extensive work, and I would like to thank Edith Maron for that, uh, about the uh, thymic nodal map, the, mm, the, the ethmic Islac nodal map. So we made some, re some minor refinements about the boundaries of the areas, but uh, in, uh, in the end, uh, we didn't uh, uh, change uh, the nodal map that uh, was used for the eighth TNM. For the end category, uh, the involvement rate is in accordance with the literature. You see an increasing involvement rate uh, with increasing uh, degree of invasiveness. And this is the supporting evidence for the N and the M. Uh, for the N, you see there is a good stratification N0, N1, N, N2. This is the pathological, um, not the clinical. Uh, and uh, it is, for the first time, we were able to uh, find a significant difference between P and 0, P and 1, and P and 2, at least in thymic carcinoma. For the M, again, for thymic carcinoma, again, M0, M1A, and M1B. M0, M1A, and M1B for thymoma. <clears throat> for, so for the stage grouping, uh, we decided eventually not to make any changes for, from the eighth, with the only exception that now stage one is divided in stage T1A and T1B based on size and not on the mediastinal pleura. So this is our patient population stage uh, using the eighth TNM and the ninth TNM, and particularly for thymic carcinoma, there is at least a better discrimination between stage two and stage three A with the new downstaging of the, the, um, the T category for the lung and the phrenic nerve. So I think this is a good supporting evidence for the new revision. So these are the final proposals for the T descriptor to drop the mediastinal plura from the T category to subdivide T1 into T1A and T1B based on dimension, five centimeters as a threshold. <clears throat> no changes for the N, no changes for the M. Okay, so thanks to the group, uh, and uh, which I'm the privilege to uh, coordinate, we, are, we were able to publish all the five papers, so all the five timing stage papers that now are available in JTO, uh, all five, so the data overview, the T, uh, the T component, the NNM, the stage, and the nodal map, so they're all available in JTO. Some, briefly, some issues about the clinical staging. You know that the clinical staging is based on imaging and on histology of the selected sites. Um, we have CT, MR uh, for optimal staging. We can use PET, but uh, we, all, we all know that there is a low sensitivity for the end status. And this is reflected uh, if you see the database that we use for the clinical stage information. You know that the information about the clinical stage was only available in less than 10% of the cases, and the, um, both clinical and pathological stage information were available in uh, 15, 16% of the case. So I think that this, there is room for improvement for the 10th TNM. Uh, clinical staging is important because it informs treatment in each category, and uh, you see here, so these are the treatment strategies uh, based on the clinical T, N, and M. And uh, you see that there is an increasing number of non-surgical patients, uh, non-surgical treatment in high C, clinical T, clinical N, and clinical M. Uh, patients. So it's, I think uh, it is very important, I mean, the clinical staging. So for the tumor sites, uh, our preliminary analysis demonstrate that there is a good concordance between the clinical tumor sites as measured by imaging and the pathological tumor sites as measured by, um, patholo by the pathologists. And this is a supporting evidence to include the tumor sites into the staging because it is applicable in the clinical and in pathological setting. Uh, these are the bubble graph uh, uh, plotting the clinical and the pathological N, the clinical and pathological N for thymoma and thymic carcinoma. And you see that there is a good concordance for the N0, but less concordance for N1, and uh, particularly N1 less than N2. This is the same for the M factor. 
So the concordance between the clinical and the pathological M uh, is very good for the M0, less optimal for M1A and M1B. <clears throat> and this is for the stage. So this was the uh, preliminary work that, uh, lead, uh, that led us to uh, make the uh, revision and the recommendations. Also, the granularity of the clinical staging information was less than optimal in our database. And I think that, again, there is a room for improvement. <clears throat> the same for the stage. So 74% of patients had missing clinical stage information versus only 25% pathological, which uh, is something that we have to think about. And this is reflected by the fact that the clinical stage uh, I think we, we have good signals that uh, uh, our recommendation can apply in the clinical and in the pathological setting, but once again, I think that we have to work for the tenth in this direction. So I would like to conclude with some thoughts for the tenth TNM, which I think it's important. So uh, first of all, we need more information on the clinical uh, pretreatment. Uh, we made some uh, uh, pro we made some improvement um, as compared to the eighth edition, but I think that in the tenth edition it will be better. Uh, we need more granular information for the T component uh, on the tumor size, uh, the level of involvement of neighboring organs, either in the clinical setting and in the pathological setting. We need a more granular information on the end status, particularly the number and the location of the harvested node, and the number of and the information of the uh, pretreatment uh, um, and involvement. And the same for the M component, more detailed information on N1A and N1B. So what might be the role of ITMIC? This is my last slide. In this, I think that ITMIC can be extremely uh, uh, informative, and extremely instrumental for this, to provide an infrastructure for a communication among the major TIMIC consortia. And uh, uh, the day after tomorrow, there will be an important meeting uh, putting together all the major uh, TIMIC uh, organizations in the world just to path the way for the next TNM. Uh, to, of course, liaise between uh, the ISLAC and the TIMIC community. I think that ITMIC has, might, be a, a very, uh, might have a very important role in this. Of course, to provide a high quality data for the ITMIC prospective database, but I think this is, uh, uh, this is something that uh, uh, has been done. And finally, to increase the contribution of underrepresented geographical areas, for example, particularly the US and so on. So, Thank you for your attention. And uh, of course, I would like to express my last words for the gratitude to all these people that are the uh, timing domain of the Staging and Prognostic Factor Committee, and also for all the people working uh, for the analysis. So without the, uh, the, the effort of all these people, nothing of this would have been done. Thank you very much. <clears throat>